And now we are recording. All right. Well, welcome everyone. I'm calling to order the June 8th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And we'll just take a moment now and make sure that everybody can be heard and can hear us. And I will start with you, Mandy. Present. Great. Ernie? Present. Sarah? Present. Pat? Present. Jennifer? Present. Anika? Present. Excellent. All right. So we are going to jump into our interviews with our guests. And again, welcome to Bernie and Sarah. And before we do that, though, I just would like to review the agenda very quickly. Um, we will move through this process of interviews and then we'll deliberate and make our recommendation. And for Bernie and Sarah, you're welcome to stay in the audience um, during that period if you'd like to. And then we will move on to the resolution in support of the fair share amendment. I believe that we'll have Kathy and Anna joining us who are the sponsors for that. And we will not be uh, reviewing the bylaw concerning deceptive advertising today. So uh, depending on how much time we have, we'll either begin our discussion of the equity lens review process or begin to look at the bylaws, probably do that first, at least for, for some period of time, but we'll have to see how much time we have. So uh, what we're going to do here, Bernie and Sarah, is... <clears throat> Committee members are going to take turns answer, asking you the questions. Uh, you'll each answer after each question, and I'll um, I'll rotate between the two of you who goes first for each. Uh, so I can go ahead and start, but before I do, let me ask if you have any questions, Bernie or Sarah, about the process. I have one. <clears throat> sure. If I if I don't. I think I can stay to hear you talk about us. Will you be emailing us after just to <laughs> let us know? <laughs> um, I believe that the recommendation will become an action of the committee. So Mandy, would you jump in and just say how you would normally handle that? Yeah. So, so I, I messed up and waited too long last time, but in general, um, the chair of the committee emails the day of the recommendations to let all the candidates know what the recommendation is and when they'll be heard. I think, as Michelle said, the intent is to have the council vote on any recommendation on Monday. So um, Michelle or Aniko should be contacting you sometime today or tomorrow. I forgot to do it, and even though I promised with the planning board until the Monday of the meeting. So we're not always as prompt as we hope, but... Um, <laughs> and of course, the recording will be available um, for anybody who would like to watch it after, um, if you can't bear to watch it <laughs> in real time. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead. These um, interview questions were adopted by this committee on May 25th, 2022. And I'm going to start uh, with you, Bernie, on this one, and I'm going to read the question. Based on the selection guidance, what do you feel you bring to the finance committee that can make it successful? Please include any experience you have with finance in general or the town's finance committee. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, you know, as everyone knows, I'm currently on the committee and I've been on this version of the finance committee and was named by the moderator to the preceding version of the finance committee. I mean, I've worked to craft or, or manage budgets in five communities in uh, one county, either as an administrator, a select board member, a finance committee member, or, or a commissioner. Um, <clears throat> I've been responsible for multi-million dollar budgets uh, for community services as a public employee, state employee. And I've um, had uh, substantial experience in how public budgeting works. Um, I continually try to update uh, myself, keep myself on top of things uh, using the Department of Revenue's uh, divisional local services, updates, newsletters, position papers, webinars. I maintain two professional memberships. <clears throat> um, I have a master's in public policy with uh, an emphasis in economics. 
uh, not that that necessarily comes into play, but um, we're familiar with the dismal sciences. So that's what I, I, I think I bring to the, to the committee. Thank you, Bernie. And I should have mentioned that you do have up to three minutes and I'm running a timer here, which if you go to that three minute mark, you'll hear ring, <laughs> um, probably. So um, I, I but, tend to go on for too long. So I'm deliberately trying to keep it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> all right, Sarah. Thank you. Can all hear me? All right. Well, as a relative newcomer to town administration and politics, I will bring curiosity and questions without the weight of tradition or decades of past controversies. I also think a resident member who is not a former elected official or municipal employee is particularly well positioned to bring forward and speak to the community's concerns. And while I haven't worked in municipal finance, I have developed and managed budgets as volunteer treasurer of two nonprofit organizations. I have overseen the bookkeepers, been responsible for tax payments and filings, prepared for independent audits and worked with investment committees. <clears throat> so I have a keen appreciation for fiscal conservatism, budget trade-offs, hard choices, cash flow, proper procedures, and how the decisions of today can increase or decrease options for the future. I feel that my, exper my experience will readily scale up to working on a $90 million budget as the concerns are shared across organizations of very different size. I believe I have demonstrated my interest in the town's finances through my work on the Community Preservation Act Committee, my attendance at finance committee and town council meetings, Cup of Joe meetings, my comments on budget issues to the committee and council, and through my writing for the blog that I co-host. In the blog, I have made a particular effort to educate readers about how the town spends money, how it decides how to spend money, and how the public can be involved. If I am selected for service on the finance committee, the blog provides one existing mechanism for communicating with the public about the committee's work. Thank you, Sarah. Excellent. So Pat, I'm gonna to move to you if you would ask question number two, please. And Sarah, I'm gonna start with you. What is your understanding of the role of the finance committee? I understand the committee's job is to take a hard look at the financial implications of proposed actions by town council. The finance committee delves into the details of a proposed expense or revenue change in the context of the town's financial realities, obligations, and plans for the future. Possibly the committee also evaluates proposals for consistency with town council's adopted goals for itself and its goals for the town manager. But I understand the committee to make recommendations based on money, not on other policy considerations. Those are for the full council to weigh. The Finance Committee also has the responsibility of developing and recommending the budget guidelines that the town manager uses to prepare the annual budget. I believe this is an underappreciated activity as it provides policy direction long before most members of the public are thinking about the next budget. It would be a particular goal of mine to better publicize this activity and solicit public input. Thank you. Bernie? Hi, Pat. Um, well, the charter basically outlines what the Finance Committee does. And it's to provide a uh, thorough review and recommendation to the full council of the, the budget uh, as received in, in a 30-day window, which is kind of a tight time frame, but it's, it's doable. Uh, so that's one real basic thing that the, the Finance Committee does. The other more broader and interesting things. The Finance Committee uh, is authorized by the Charter um, to, as a whole, to investigate any and all uh, books, accounts, management uh, of, of any town agency, um, be, be it through a request of the, town, of the town manager, superintendent, library director, 
<clears throat> and to interview town employees as to how things are going. And I think that's where my experience comes in. Um, because you can, you have a baseline to operate from, so you know when things are, um, uh, are going uh, according to uh, what the state rules and regs require, because we are a creature of the state, even though we have a charter. Um, and begin to ask questions about why things happen the way they happen. Why can we do it faster, better, cheaper? Can we do it another way? Um, one of my, uh, my favorite phrases is that uh, we've always done it this way is an excuse, not an explanation. Uh, and uh, the Finance Committee does shape the budget guidelines for the, uh, for the council. Uh, and that's an important, uh, an important function. And, the, the guidelines, uh, as Sarah mentioned, are sort of disconnected from the budget process because the guidelines are issued basically in November and then the, the, the budget's debated in, in May and June. So um, making that distinction and letting people know uh, is, is an, important, uh, an important role to be, to be played. Thank you, Bernie. Okay, Anika, I'm going to move to you to ask question number three, please. Okay, and uh, I will start with you, Bernie. So, <clears throat> what is your un oh, what is your understanding of your role as a non-voting member? Um, to to provide a objective, um, independent voice. It's an interesting position because um, the non-voting members, the resident members, we're we're not part of town government per se. We don't work for the town. Um, and we're, well, we collaborate with the council and the finance committee. We're really not elected officials either. So that gives us a degree of independence um, that I, I think um, is refreshing. And you know, I think you can make the best of it. Um, <clears throat> knowing, you know, what works best, what are best practices, what are bad, bad practices. Um, so being able to, to, to question, to challenge, um, and to endorse. When, when there's a good idea. It's in everyone's best interest to have the town operate as efficiently as an organization, um, meet a variety of needs. And even those that aren't, um, aren't even those needs aren't seen as immediately relevant to me, but uh, you know, so it's, it's independent role that I think is an interesting addition to the charter. Thank you. Sarah? Thank you. Non-voting members bring the concerns and questions of the community, hopefully with a very broad perspective. The resident members can ask the basic questions or the naive questions, can question assumptions and traditional ways of planning and managing the public's monies. Non-voting members can also take the information back to the public as residents, not as elected officials or town employees which I think allows a certain freedom of communication. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, and Bernie for that, thank you. Um, I'm gonna move to you, Jennifer, to ask question number four. <clears throat> okay, thank you. And um, this question, so Sarah, uh, you'll answer this one first, uh, thank you. Um, and the question is, uh, tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with the group particularly where opinions were in conflict or the decision was controversial. The Jones Library first submitted a request for $1 million to the Community Preservation Act Committee two and a half years ago. <clears throat> and in all my service on that committee, CPAC, no other request triggered as much disagreement among committee members as that one. And of course, public comments were also strong on both sides. And despite extensive discussion and debate, there was no meeting of the minds in that case. Members disagreed, we had to vote and did, but everyone was very civil and discussed the pros and cons in detail. And then we moved on. And in case anyone listening to this is confused, this particular request from the library was first approved and then withdrawn and the library submitted a new proposal in the following grant round. And that one was approved by town council. Thank you. Um, and Bernie? 
Yeah, you know? you know, I've, I've been part of a number of municipal governments. I also worked in human services for almost three decades. So there's always a, <laughs> there's any number of experiences where um, we've been a part of a group um, and there's been conflict and um, controversial decisions. Uh, the, the, probably the, the one I, I want to speak about, the one I'm, I'm very proud of, is uh, my role in the development of the South County Emergency Medical Services System, which serves Deerfield, uh, Sunderland, and uh, uh, Waitley. Um, working with uh, two very talented other town administrators, we were able to take uh, uh, what were marginal um, uh, professional and volunteer ambulance companies work through all the disputes between three communities, three boards of selectmen, um, <clears throat> three different agencies, several different agencies to, uh, to shape a paramedic level ambulance service that serves those three communities now. And in fact, one after I left as administrator was given an award um, for, its, for its innovation. Uh, that was a situation where <clears throat> we, we had to uh, collaborate. Um, uh, we had to, uh, Come up with good data. Uh, we got some good professional guidance. Uh, identify key allies and, uh, among citizens, and then get votes from three different town meetings to agree to a plan that, um, uh, it, it, which started off with a great deal of controversy and ended with uh, a great deal of unity between those those three communities. And that, the South County EMS has been very successful. And that's something I'm very proud of having a hand. My heat buttons are working. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie and Sarah. And Mandy, would you please ask question number five? Thank you. Um, and Bernie gets to answer this one first if you haven't figured out our plan yet. <laughs> um, please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering financial matters and the budget when making recommendations to the council. Uh, well, a, a favorite quote, and I, I miss it. I miss. Uh, appropriate. I, I misidentified this the first time I, I, I used it in, in the council, but it's, uh, you know, David Axelrod, um, who helped put Obama in office, uh, did a lot of consulting with municipalities and mayors and the like, said, you can be as visionary as you want, but make sure the trash gets picked up and the potholes get filled. So that's the first criteria. You know, are we meeting the basics of service for the community? Um, and that's a pretty broad range. That's um, that's, that's, you know, running the transfer station, filling the potholes, but also health safety, um, personal safety, public safety, uh, health safety uh, uh, services, and then education, which uh, plays a dominant role. So are those basic needs really being met? That's the first, first criteria. Um, the, when you look at other services, then you, you want to ask who's benefiting from them and what are the expected outcomes and who's being left out? Um, it's too easy to overlook um, certain populations. Um, and as I said before, the, you know, to, to use the, uh, we've always done it this way uh, kind of explanation, it's, it's an excuse, not an explanation. Uh, I try to um, keep in mind that effectiveness is in the outcome and not in the amount of money spent. So it's important to look back and see how things have been going and to get some good measures of how things have been going. And always keep in mind that there's always more demand um, than money to uh, to be had. And so, if you're gonna if, if you're gonna fund make certain funding decisions, be explicit about where you're compromising and why. Uh, don't keep don't keep things hidden. Don't have parking lot agendas. Thank you, and Sarah. Thanks. I will want to make sure I understand the goal of the proposal, whatever it is. Does the proposal achieve that goal? Is there a better way to get there? What are the downsides and for how far in the future? I would assess the proposal in light of council's priorities. Perhaps a proposal is affordable, but a low priority. I would hope that the finance committee could say in its report, we can do this, but it will prevent council from taking other actions it may deem more important. Or perhaps a proposal is reasonable from a financial perspective, what, but would demand more staff time than expected. Concerns like that should also be raised. And in addition, and as Bernie said, 
who would be helped by this proposed action? Would anyone be hurt? Who's, who's not at the table? Does this proposal improve access to services? When it comes time to develop the budget guidelines, I would try very hard to, to solicit hopes and desires from the public, the needs and the wants. I would see it as my role to put these issues on the table so that they are formally addressed. And in all this work, I would, hear, I would adhere to two bedrock principles, ensuring the highest and best use of every dollar and positioning the town for a strong future. Every decision has an opportunity cost. What do we give up if we choose to take a particular action? Thank you, Sarah and Bernie. And I will ask question number six. What is your approach to incorporating public input into your decision making? And that one starts with you, Sarah. Thank you. I hope that I would have an open mind and be willing to be swayed by arguments made by the public. I would hope that written comments could be recognized in meetings. And even though there is often no dialogue during committee meetings, I believe the committee should somehow respond to comments. Often members of the public feel their comments go into a black hole and are not considered. It would be responsive to the public for the finance committee to say, we received a number of comments advocating for X and here briefly is what we think. I would do my best to make sure that resident concerns are not overlooked, even if they cannot be satisfied. But in the end, my judgments would have to involve many factors besides public sentiment. If a popular proposal is fiscally unwise, then I would not be in favor of it. If people have strong feelings on issues not directly relevant to the committee's responsibility, then I would put them aside or refer them to the appropriate forum. And if something is a priority for town council whose members have been elected, I would defer to them and not the commenters. Thank you, Sarah. Bernie? Oh, it, the challenge that I have is getting input from um, and it's something that's endemic, I think, but it, every community, not just Amherst or not just me, is getting input from a wide variety of citizens and not the usual suspects who show up with prepared statements that are, are read endlessly. Um, you know, what I try to do is engage in ca casual conversation to genuinely listen to people's concerns, um, try to offer information where I can, I'm not... Um, adverse to sitting down and doing some research and sending people information. I've done that. Um, you know, to, to, to listen to concerns, complaints, either in conversation, on social media, uh, chance encounters, uh, uh, people who, uh, uh, who make appearances at uh, uh, other meetings other than the finance committee and offer comments that may relate to um, uh, to, to financial concerns, I'm always looking for different perspectives and I'm always looking for good ideas to steal. Um, make no bones about it. Maybe it's a good idea, I'll take it um, and, and, and use it. But again, the concern for me always is getting, um, getting a wide range of, getting a wide range of input. Great. Thank you, Bernie and Sarah. And so Pat, you'll ask, could you please ask question number seven? Uh, Sarah, what else would you like us to know uh, about you that makes you a strong candidate for the finance committee? Just that I'm not afraid to do the considerable work to ask questions or to voice my opinion. I very much want the town to successfully meet the needs of its residents over the years to come. Thank you. Bernie? Um, I'm not someone who's inclined to panic at the at a black swan events. Um, I think I've learned that there are a few, few things that one encounters uh, in the world that are, are, are completely new. There's usually uh, answers that can be found. There's usually information that can be had and that you have to kind of sift through and sort that out. Um, so when disaster strikes, and I've been through a variety of disasters, um, the first thing to do is to stop and think and listen and ask 
you know, what is the data telling us? So that's one thing that I try to do. On a personal level, I tend to have a sort of a self-deprecating sense of humor, um, not af afraid to uh, make fun of myself, um, but I'm also inclined to take a poke at pretense, which can get me into trouble at times. I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Um, sometimes the, uh, I, I try to keep the filter up, but you know, sometimes it's just feel compelled to do the other. Um, this would be my, if I go back on the finance committee, this would be my last time around. Um, uh, you know, I've been, the next two years are gonna be very challenging. Um, I've had some role to play in shaping this budget and, um, in, in over the last two years. And, and I really like to be able to um, see it through and then um, take my leave. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, sorry, Pat. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Sarah, you answered that one too, right? I did. We went into a different order. Okay, great. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, Anika, if you could ask our final question, please. Okay. <clears throat> so, currently, the Finance Committee meets twice a month during the year, but when budget season begins in April and May, meetings become much more frequent. Can you confirm that you have the time to commit to this meeting schedule? Please answer yes or, yes or no. And I hope I have this right. Sarah, please. Yes. <laughs> and Bernie. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Thank you. All right. Um, so just, I know, and Mandy, cut me off if I'm wrong here. Okay, I just wanna ask if there's anything that either of you forgot to say um, and would like to add uh, to your comments for any one of the questions. And I'll start with you, Bernie, um, if there's anything you forgot to say. Uh, characteristically, I will not say anything more. Thank you. Uncharacteristically, I want to say. <laughs> okay, Sarah. <laughs> No, nothing more. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you both being here. Um, appreciate you both applying for this very important position. Um, and we will ask Athena to move you back into the audience and then you can choose from there if you'd like to stay or go. <laughs> thank well, you and we'll be in touch. Right. Oh, there we are. Okay. I'm just gonna. All right. So uh, at this point, we are going to move on to our discussion and deliberations and uh, ultimately we'll end up making a recommendation to the town council. Um, and I wondered if we could just take 30 seconds to review the um, guidelines that the finance committee has so they're in your packet and we can just do this quietly for 30 seconds just to look at the selection guidance and remind ourselves of that maybe some of you have already done that this morning but uh, i'm just gonna mute myself and do that again for 30 seconds be back
if anyone needs more time, please raise your hand. Otherwise, we can move on. All right. Uh, well, I'll just start by saying that we have two excellent candidates, clearly, and uh, just very, very happy, especially in light of what Mandy spoke about at our council meeting and um, finding folks to apply for these positions. So I'm feeling very grateful for that. And it makes the decision that much harder. <laughs> um, and so I would like to open it up for discussion. And I would encourage us to begin by discussing um, before sort of directing necessarily um, to a particular decision at this point. But um, I did see Jennifer's hand come up first. Um, yeah, I just, <clears throat> I did want to ask, because one of the um, criteria was, <clears throat> excuse me, if um, a candidate is reapplying, that, you know, if they've, that there is some preference if they haven't served for six or more consecutive years. So is that, so how long has Bernie been on the Finance Committee? That's my question. That's a great question. And yes, I did see that in the town council policy on reappointments. And if anybody is looking for that, that's in the finance committee selection guidance, uh, which is in our packet. Um, I believe that Bernie has been on for at least three years, but Pat, actually, yeah, you were, do you know you were on the committee last year, right? Your, yeah. He was not on the committee the first year of the council, so it's been two years and a few months. Great. So yes, he is uh, would be a reappointment in this case, and so the guidance that we've been that that has been adopted would apply to him in this case. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say a few words about each candidate. Um, you know, Bernie, as Jennifer just mentioned, is currently on the Finance Committee and is seeking a second two year term. Um, you know, in terms of his, he, he's absolutely qualified, meets all of the selection criteria that we've set and set forth and adopted. Um, you know, I I liked his answer to um, how he would consider a budget with the questions of are we meeting the basic needs of the community um, before we're looking to add in more programs um, and you know effectiveness of outcome. Um, you know, it's budgeting's tough, um, and he's got the experience to deal with the toughness and all. And then Sarah, I was really impressed with all of her answers. Um, I particularly liked that she brought out the budget guidelines as a very important time for needing public input because I think we've seen as this year and, and not just important time for public input, but for the council to really consider what those guidelines mean as we've seen this year as a budget came out and as school committees adopted budget um, and trying to relate that to a budget that happens five months later, right? Um, and how do you do that? Um, you know, and so it, I think both of them would serve on the finance committee extremely well, would bring their own perspectives that not our counselors that are currently on the finance committee don't necessarily have. So no matter what decision, and I'm gonna not indicate which way I'm leaning right now, but I think no matter what recommendation we make, um, the town council and the finance committee will be well served. Any comments from Pat or Anika at this time, Anika? I, I would have to just co-sign. These are clearly two uh, very strong and um, and qualified candidates. I think that um, you know I, I I like both of their answers to almost all all questions. I mean, they were all really great answers. Um, I think that um, you know with Bernie's three decades of experience and you know setting up. Um, I think it was the South County Emergency Services, um, 
you know, there's a lot of nerves in that. Um, I appreciated Sarah's uh, fresh perspective, um, but also very in-depth and thoughtful. Um, uh, I feel that like she's very motivated to engage community. Um, I appreciated that uh, she brought up thinking about who was not only who was at the table, but who was not at the table. Um, and I, I thought that that was very important and that she's also just re really aligned with our overall goals in terms of um, really <laughs> getting more community members involved to serve on these uh, committees. But uh, this, is, this is a tough one um, to, say, to say the very least um, for myself that I'm still spinning with in, in my head as I speak. Jennifer, I saw that your hand, yeah, please. Yeah, I, I agree with, you know, everything that's that's been said. I don't, this is, we can't make a wrong decision, but it, it, I don't know. I really am struggling with how we make the decision because they are two very, um, you know, excellently qualified candidates. Um, I will say it's not gonna surprise anyone. I didn't love when the word usual suspects uh, slipped out in talking about public comment because I feel that I've experienced it. You can speak twice and then the third time you're a usual suspect. And I do think people tend to use that characterization when they don't agree with someone. I don't know that they, when people speak in support of their positions, they think of them that way, but I will let that go. So um, yeah, I, I don't know how we proceed from here. I mean, I don't know if deference is given because to, to it does say, um, you know, in the guidelines that if someone has served that the preference, if I'm reading it correctly, they would normally be reappointed unless it exceeds six years. I mean, I'm not looking, I'm not advocating for one over the other. I'm just saying if we're, because I'm at a loss at how to make the decision with two such well-qualified candidates. So I don't know if we start to look there. And I can just read that quickly so that if anyone's watching this, I'll just read what that says. says. Generally, if a member of a multiple member body appointed by the town council is seeking reappointment, they are given preference in appointment for up to six years of consecutive service to take advantage of the experience and expertise gained and to honor the voluntary time commitment of members. If a member has served six consecutive years, well, we don't have to even go on to that because that's not the case here, but that's what Jennifer is pointing out here. Uh, and Anika, I believe I saw your hand first. Okay, so I was just wondering if we, that's still, I mean, I, I understand the words that were read, um, but I'm, I'm still not as, as clear um, because we went in, I guess we, we went in, well, knowing that we have, uh, I, I think based on their answers, two great candidates. And if we've walked in knowing that, I mean, I, I'd like to know, is, is this um, standard? Does this mean, okay, that would mean that we would reappoint Bernie? Um, then are we misleading with the, with the interviews as if there's open? Because then wouldn't that mean we would have wasted Sarah Marshall's very valuable time? So if we could just have a little more clarity, like I understand the words, I'm just not sure. Does that mean that this is an automatic or not automatic or expected um, reappointment that we could have maybe been more clear about ahead of time? But one thing that I'll say is because I, I I do struggle a bit uh, with understanding this as well. Any applicant is made aware of this um of these fine of this financial selection guidance mm -hmm. so it's not to say that i i'm not sure how i feel about whether this is equitable or not but both candidates in this case or any candidate that would have applied um i believe would be aware of this financial um selection guidance and i do understand i actually sent it over so i mean right. I, <laughs> just like now you know, of reading it through, I, I guess, um, a, a, a different lens. I have missed that bit to question it earlier. Yeah. Mandy. So I'll, I'll talk about a few things because this was a 
paragraph that was debated a lot in GOL before it went to the council. It was debated in council. Um, reappointments have been debated in nearly every committee and at every appointment process where a reappointment has been sought since the council started. Um, this paragraph, there's there's two other sentences. Um, there's three other sentences that, that should be read, which are the recommending committee will treat every opening, whether a seat is held by a current member who seeks reappointment or not as a vacant position. And residents seeking reappointment will have their current service and experience on the body considered as part of the process for making a recommendation to the council. A committee or board member is under no obligation to seek or accept reappointment, nor is the recommending committee obligated to recommend reappointment to a resident seeking it. So it really is not an automatic. It's really not intended to be any type of automatic. It is tended to be a preference is the word, but preference considering um, current service and you know that on a committee. So the council in the past has reappointed people who have sought reappointment and recommended and recommending committees have recommended people who have sought reappointment to certain committees and they have not in so, you know recommended people who have sought reappointment and instead recommended others who have um, sought appointment at the same time as someone seeking reappointment. So it's it's a preference. Um, it's not automatic. Um, it's tough, especially when you have multiple qualified people. Um, you know, and to me, the 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 key sentence is the have their current service and experience on the body considered as part of the process for making a recommendation. Um, because that's that's one thing I look at when I say when I think um, was a resident who's seeking reappointment contributing to the body was were their contributions valuable did they show up did they do the work um, you know did they uh, collaborate in a meaningful manner or did they cause dissension did they cause you know struggle with cooperation on a committee um, you know those are some of the things I look to when thinking about should they be preferenced for reappointment is, you know, do they, in some sense, do they work well with others? Not just was their vote a vote I liked, right? But, uh, you know, do they have respect for other committee members, the council, the staff, the, you know, what, what did we see with their service? And is that something we would like to continue? Um, you know, and when I think about all of that with, you know, so now I'm going to get into where I think I'm leaning, which is when I think about all of that as it respects uh, with respect to Bernie. Um, he's been a fantastic member of the finance committee. The contributions he's been able to bring um, are something on a finance committee that doesn't have a lot of municipal experience other than Andy at this point, although Kathy is much more, you know, Kathy's now four years in, right? You know, it's not just Andy at this point. Kathy's got now a lot more experience. So does Lynn. Um, but, you know, Michelle, you're you're very new, right? <laughs> Alicia is very new. Um, you know, and so I, I think his, his service the last two years, the fact that he's not seeking a third term right now, that it's not years five and six, that it's years three and four are also going into my thinking about whether, you know, we should, I, I should preference Bernie over Sarah, um, you know, and, and when I think about all of that, I, I end up um, looking at this reappointment section of the policy and going and leaning to my preference being to recommend Bernie. That says nothing about the fact that I believe Sarah would be a fantastic member of the finance committee. Um, that I would love to see her apply again if I, you know, if this committee doesn't recommend her. Um, but Bernie's experience the last two years through COVID, through the creation of the Crest, through the funding of the Crest, through the funding of DEI, to see that through for another two years, I think that continuity um, may be very valuable to not just the committee, but the council. Um, so that's where I'm leaning right now, but that also gives people sort of some background on how that paragraph came to be. Thank you. That's really helpful, Mandy. Um, I'll just add some some something to this um, in terms of both of the 
both of the candidates. I have had the privilege of working with Bernie um, for this bit of time now, and as a new member of the Finance Committee and new to town government, and I have found that he has been a wonderful um, and very knowledgeable um, committee or non-voting uh, resident member. And he's um, he has a really strong understanding of the budget. And I've also seen where he is open to exploring um, different initiatives and um, and I've really appreciated the collaboration and, and what he has brought to the committee. So I, I will say that. I will also say that I think Sarah has shown excellent leadership um, in her role on, on the uh, CPA committee. And I think that's something that we should really uh, uplift and think through because um, her leadership has been absolutely tremendous on a committee that's really difficult in certain ways has to make difficult decisions there's a lot of detail involved um and i really like what sarah said about um her willingness and it sounded like excitement to engage the community and i think that's really important in finance it can be uh somewhat dry or isolating if you're not um, familiar with some of you know the concepts or or even familiar with the way a municipal budget works. Um, so I really appreciated that there would be that sort of um, line out to the community, it seemed. And from a non-voting uh, resident member where that is different than what a counselor is able to do um, in that in in their role on the committee. Um, so it, this is really a very, very difficult choice. Um, I feel personally, my like heartstrings are pulled when I think about Bernie's comment about wanting to see through the work that he has already, um, you know, been involved with. And I think that that is something to really think about um, seeing through uh, as Mandy said, uh, a very difficult time in in our town, um, and also these new programs and and Bernie's really been fantastic, and I can understand why he would want to see see all of that through. It, it occurred to me that this appointment changes over in July, just next month. So for Bernie, he goes from, you know. Uh, being on the committee to potentially being off the committee as of next month. And there's still, um, you know, more seeing through. <laughs> so that's, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, and would love to hear any other additional thoughts. My hesitation is to use any, uh, you know, like this preference, for example, as a way to make a decision. Um, and so I'm really struggling <laughs> with that piece there. That's a real, <laughs> that's a real tough one. Uh, yes, Jennifer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm struggling as you are too. I, I'm looking to that because it's, the only thing that could give me some guidance to make a choice one way or the other. Uh, this is, I, I mean, I thought about it all last night. I, I don't, don't know how to vote. <laughs> so that's why I, I'm kind of grasping at that for some, you know, independent objective guidance to use. Because I, um, I think that has been the tendency with other boards and commissions too, is if, when when someone applies for their second term if they have you know been a part, you know member in good standing and participated you know for all the reasons uh, mandy said that the kind of preference or tendency is for reappointment to a second term and again with two such uh equally well qualified otherwise equally well qualified candidates that's you know i, I keep looking there because i don't know how to make the decision Mandy, can I ask a clarifying question on the reappointment? Is that, 
you you talked about where it came from and that it had been debated um but where did it where does it come from you know originally is that something going back you know way before the charter way be, you know where do you, do you have any history on that so in some sense it's a compromise um paul's policy um is if someone seeks reappointment to to re, you know if they want to stay on a committee and they're already sitting there to appoint them no questions asked no interviews not even considering who else is there. The select board was similar before the charter changed is my understanding, um, at least up until that six year limit for the select board. I don't know whether Paul has sort of a two term limit or not, but the select board sort of considered it most, most appointments are three years. So the select board sort of said, if you're seeking for your second term, you know, and, and you want it, we'll, we'll give it to you. Um, there were some counselors on the first council that wanted it automatic um for up to six years and other counselors that um didn't wanted to uh, believed that um an automatic six years um sort of keeps a status quo an, an automatic keeps the status quo without knowing who else may apply right um once you're in and if you automatically have that that seats then if if that happens there's no opportunity for diversifying at all any particular board or committee until you've worked through all of that. Um, and so you're, you know, you're sort of in that position. And then there's also the, um, some counselors believed that um, prior service should be considered in terms of both the political aspects of how they vote on certain committees. You know, this is not just, this is a policy that doesn't just apply to finance committee appointments, but it applies to ZBA and planning board. And there is definitely on the first council, a difference of opinion as to whether particularly the ZBA and planning board appointments were political or not, and should consider how people may vote um, or may not vote, right? Because <laughs> you don't necessarily know ahead of time, but, um, you know, and and so in some sense, this, this where the council ended up from my perspective was much more of a compromise of um, not automatic. We want to treat them all as separate open seats in order to see who applies, because if they become automatic, you never even capture those applications um, and you never see who might be interested and who might apply, see who applies, do the interviews and then make that decision. Of course, for a situation like this, it doesn't make our job as counselors on a recommending committee any easier. But, um, you know, so some wanted it to just be automatic and never see any new applications or anything. And others said, you know, we, we want to see the applications. We don't want it automatic. We want to be able to consider, has, has the person done the job? You know, because if it's automatic, you might be putting someone in there that um, hasn't done the job, but they sit on the board and they're automatic because that's what the policy is, or they might have done the job, but they might be a very, you know, you know, someone who's very disruptive and has harmed, you know, and made more difficult the work of the committee, not because of their views, but because of just how they operate and being able to take that stance between appointments and say, is this still a person we want on the committee was important to some counselors. So that's why I say it's more of a compromise between an automatic and a um, absolutely open, don't consider it at all, brand new. It's a, you know, we are going to consider it and we are going to preference, but that doesn't mean you get it. It's not very helpful in some sense to, to us at this point, but that's sort of the history. Pat, Pat knows the history just as well. She sat through all of those. She can add anything she wants to that. <laughs> Pat, can your cat just make the decision for us? <laughs> she already has. I'll tell you later. Okay. Uh, okay, Anika. Okay, so Mandy or Athena, please stop me if I'm not allowed to ask this. Um, and Michelle, I do not mean to put you on, on any spot, but seeing as you are on uh, the finance committee. Um, 
Okay, so with so we have three of us here as new counselors. So on committees, it's like the the newness, the curiosity can be great, and it also can be a, a curve, and and it can delay in in certain aspects. So with your experience so far, and recognizing that we have we to an extent we can we cannot go wrong. I think that. There are so many strong points um, for each Bernie and, and, and Sarah. I mean, clearly we have this kind of steadfast, like I've, I've got this experience through Bernie and then um, I, I, I sense the exact same through Sarah and she could even be looking through more of an inclusive lens with this. But in your experience as a, as a new counselor, do you think that if you were leaning on maybe the needs of the finance committee, considering the makeup of the group, do you think that you, the 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 committee, would benefit as it stands more from some from experience that can follow through, um, or maybe fresh perspectives, a, a fresh perspective? I'll do my best to answer that. Um, I, I and I will say that I received an email this morning from a counselor um, who would like GOL to consider extending the time on the uh, non-voting resident members, um, and that sort of was another a lens to consider. And, and that counselor said that um, that did have to do with continuity and. Um, even though extending would mean that non-voting members are on longer than the counselors, it would help to sort of bring that continuity and then you know be able to sort of help as new counselors come on to the committee. So I I do feel given where the town is at with its financial health and, and where we're going to be challenged in the coming years that having Bernie will really be helpful um, in in particular if we're really looking at what we're what we're coming up against in the in the next couple of years. Um, I also feel like I hope Sarah runs for town council. Honestly, I, 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 I think Sarah, I have seen Sarah um, just so thoughtful, extremely smart, um, has, you know, got, delved into things that, you know, maybe she didn't have, like with her blog, for example, where she's talking about things that she's, uh, you know, maybe not have a lot of experience uh, previously with, I think her curiosity, and that's a word that came up a few times. Um, so I really hope that Sarah will run for elected office. I hope that Sarah, if, if she's not chosen for this position, will um, apply for some other position that's available because she's really fantastic. But I do think that the continuity um, and, and where we're at right now on the committee um, and, and with the town having Bernie would would be helpful. So it's not a great answer, but um, that's the best I got. <laughs> I would second that town council. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I, one of the things that I was thinking about when I first got on to the committee was sort of the, di what was the diversity in, within the committee, you know, um, and uh, in all different ways. And I'm not sure the committee has, I don't want to say, I, I don't think that public, 
outreach other than sort of the hearings that the committee is required to do and the list, you know, that kind of thing. I don't feel like the public piece has been as strong as I would like it to be, particularly um, as Mandy said, when the guidelines are being established and, um, you know, I had a slightly different view on Bernie's comment about meeting the basic needs of the community than you did, Mandy, um, because I think that that's really subjective. Um, what are the basic needs of a community, right? And he talked about potholes. And of course, I mean, there's some level of that. That's absolutely true. Um, you know, but there's also like, how, what lens are we seeing the basic needs of the community through? And, um, and I'm not saying that Sarah necessarily like had something to say that was different, but I just, I, that was my take on that. So I do think we need to, it's 10 o'clock, we do have some other business. So um, I think we're going to have to move toward a recommendation. And what I'm going to ask is if there are any members of the committee um, that would like to try to make a motion to recommend um, given the conversation that we had. And then we'll see if that passes great. If it doesn't, then we'll have to try again. And Mandy. I mean, I'll, I'll make a motion based on where I'm leaning and I have no idea whether it'll pass or not, but um, I'll, I'll move to recommend the town council appoint Bernie Kubiak um, to the finance committee as a non-voting member um, for a term to begin July 1, 2022 and end June 30, 2024. Uh, instead of appoint, it should be reappoint. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Great, thank you, Pat. And is there any further discussion? I'm sorry, Mandy, what was the, the end of the term length? Was it 2024? 2024, I believe our finance committee non-resident, uh, okay. non-voting members are two years. So 2024. Okay. That's what I thought, thank you. Are there any other comments to add before we vote? All right, so Mandy, I'm gonna start with you to make this easy. <laughs> How do you vote? I'm an I. Okay, Pat? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. Anika? Aye. Okay, and I'm also an aye. So um, that is unanimous. And um, yes, Mandy. So, sorry, with it unanimous, I do just want to make sure if Sarah watches this or that it goes into the report, I think we've said it enough that that unanimous doesn't mean or doesn't reflect anything about our belief as to Sarah's qualifications or how well she would serve on the committee. So I, I just wanted to make sure that's said. Or that we wish we had four applicants and two spots available. Pat. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure, um, Anika, I, I watched how it, you, know, you were uh, working to figure out up to the last minute how you were going to vote. Unanimous is not important. So I really encourage each of us to make the vote that we think is the vote we that we really support and not feel like any com committee recommendation has, um, has to be unanimous. And I'm sure you did what you needed to do, but I just wanna make sure uh, for all of us, because I think there is a, a bunch of hooey attached to unanimous. Uh, I, I respect all of you, but you do not sway me that much. I, this was very difficult, but this was my own difficulty. Thank you. Love you all. Yeah, no, that's what I assumed, but I'm talking to all of us in truth. Yeah, it's, it's just there. I mean, this is this is really like I, I'm, I'm still I'm still thinking about it, but I'm I'm doing my best to think, you know, beyond beyond myself. And I'm really not that budget person like that. I deeply respect those who are um 
And I know this is a, a, a this is a tough decision. And so where I I have my own wants and needs, but I I generally feel like with most of the council votes, it's not necessary. It's really not about my personal wants at all. And I do hope this will motivate Sarah or fire Sarah up potentially to um, to run for elected office. No, um, we need you, Sarah. Please, really? Or, or ZBA, ZBA, ZBA. Oh, ZBA, right. That's a wonderful ZBA. idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and Athena, did you get everything that you needed there? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, and Mandy, I'll follow up with you about, so I heard sort of the conversation that was happening in the beginning about the next steps and sending the email, but I'll just make sure I got all that right. And if there are any other logistics um, that we need to handle on the back end of this, Pat, I see your hand. Yeah, I'm going to need to leave the meeting. I'm having warnings that I'm starting a migraine, so, um, but I am there in spirit. Thank, Thank you. Pat. Thank better. you very much. All right, so we're going to move on to our review of the resolution in support of the fair share amendment. Um, I did give Kathy and Anna the 10, 10 o'clock. So, and I see that Anna's in the audience, Kathy is not. So um, Athena, if we could bring, we bring, I'm getting confused. Yeah, please bring Anna in, <laughs> um, that would be great. Mandy, are you in a position where you can pull it up? Okay, awesome. Welcome, Anna. I, I was just waiting for you to tell me to do so. <laughs> Don't we speak telepathically? <laughs> um, hi, Anna. Hi. Um, is Ian Roadwalt in the audience? Yes. I'm so sorry. He is our he's our community sponsor. If you could bring in him, him in, oh, that'd be great. Wonderful. I was wondering, I'm like. Yeah. Wow, Ian is just joining us at GOL. Ian just thinks GOL is fun now. <laughs> I mean, it is. He's correct, but. You're right. <laughs> Welcome back, Ian. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, great. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to you and Ian just to give us a little background on this. I don't think Kathy's here, but I'll keep an eye out in case she comes. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, I, I didn't think she could make it, but um, no worries if she's able to. Obviously, we'd love to have her. So um, Ian, if it's okay with you, I'm, I've got like three sentences and then I can toss it to you if you have anything to add. So uh, thank you. So the Fair Share Amendment is a proposal that will be on the ballot in September. Um, and is that, yeah, September. Yeah, sorry, my brain just was like September? November, November right? November, November. November. Right? Sorry, I've been really focused on September for the past three weeks and can't get that out of my brain. Um, so the fair share, let me start over. The fair share amendment will be on the ballot in November. There we go. And it's a proposal to amend the Massachusetts constitution and create an additional tax of four percentage points on the portion of a person's annual income above $1 million. So this would generate approximately $2 billion. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that billion not rephrase, emphasize, $2 billion a year, which would be spent on quality public education, affordable public college and universities, and for the repair and maintenance of roads, bridges, and public transportation. I didn't get a shirt, but I did get a pin. And what's really cool is they show you all of the things that it's going to fund on their little pin. You can see roads and bridges and schools and universities. It's great, great logo. Um, so one of the things that, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this forward as a resolution is because Amherst is really, Amherst stands to benefit from this in a, in a um, not a unique way, but in a heightened way. Um, given our needs in our, in our roads and bridges, uh, given the, the uh, presence of the land, the Massachusetts land grant institution, um, and given our needs with our schools, right? We've seen, we've seen needed investment in our public schools. This is something that I believe the council should uh, come out in support of. And so I was very excited that Ian, who we've worked with before, is now working with the Fair Share Amendment um, and, and was able to work with me in creating this. I also wanna note that our school committee passed a resolution um, 
in April or May, uh, supporting the fair share amendment. Theirs was obviously much more focused on uh, K through 12 public education. Ours is broader because the town council covers all of it. So I appreciate your consideration and happy to answer any questions you have about clarity, consistency, or actionability. And then Ian, do you have anything to add? Um, I think you uh, gave a great introduction. Thank you, Anna, um, and, and thanks for working with me on this. Um, as some of you may know, this has been through uh, sort of multiple iterations um, going through the state legislator, le legislative process. Um, and uh, now, it, as Anna mentioned, it's finally on, on the ballot in November. Um, we're really excited about, about winning this. Um, and uh, it, it will be an, an annual $2 billion. Um, and uh, the amount of people of individuals impacted by it uh, across the state would only be about 20,000 to 25,000 individuals um, in, in uh, the population of, I think it's close to 6.9 million in the state. Um, a, a number of, uh, along with Amherst School Committee and a number of uh, town councils, city councils and town meetings have recently passed um, similar resolutions. Uh, Holyoke City Council just last night passed it. Um, and uh, over the weekend, I think, uh, new, I, th I think Conway Town Meeting Pat was the most recent uh, one to pass it also. Um, so I am just really grateful for your time with this and we're excited to hopefully pass it here. Thank you, Anna and Ian. And Ian, thank you for your advocacy um, in, in these different areas that you've been um, advocating So, for. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's start our review. And we will begin, as we always do, with the title um, and seeing if they're the title. I know Mandy usually does a preview, <laughs> preview review. <laughs> Um, and that's been very helpful. And I see she's made just a couple. Um, so we will, any comments or questions on the title or the way that the sponsorship is outlined here? Did I forget to write the sponsors, Mandy? I think we just added Ian, right? I don't think, I think oh, no, the whole she, thing she forgot added. the whole line. The whole thing. <laughs> yep, just didn't put it in there. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the first whereas. So I just added the Oxford comma. Love an Oxford comma, thank you. There's a couple of them that got added throughout, so I'll highlight them as we go. I have a question for you about Oxford commas, but I'm happy with this, that's fine. Okay, any, any and just jump in because um, I can't see everyone very well. So uh, let's move on to power to whereas two. Okay, whereas three. All right, looks good. Whereas four. Oh, one of the a word that stands out to me, and I'm not I'm not saying we should remove it, but to take on enormous debt, the word enormous. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why it's standing out to me. I don't know if anyone else has a, a reaction to that word, but uh, I'm fine leaving it, but it just seems maybe like subjective, like what's enormous. Um, it is subjective. I mean, I think if you really, if you want to dig into it, we can, and we can look back at the resolution that was passed in support of student debt forgiveness and, and see if there's language there. Um, if it's not something that you want to pursue, then I'm comfortable leaving it. No, no, I'm, I don't, I don't need to pursue it. It just comes out at me. So I mentioned it. <laughs> I appreciate it. You know, I, you know, I hate a subjective uh, term and, and that's absolutely one. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So next ensuring. 
So this one, I added an and, and this could be one of the ones where I wasn't sure whether that was appropriate or not, but the way it read to me. No, I think the and is appropriate. And I got rid of the comma because I, I thought the yeah. phrase was reliable transportation, crucial elements in supporting families and the workforce and yep. building and strong building economies. Strong. Yep. That's Jennifer? Fine. So is um, the M capitalized? I should know. Oh, in here? Yeah. I don't think so. No, it's not. I just always get trapped with that. <laughs> I feel like million needs more emphasis. People don't <laughs> understand. Million's really big. <laughs> so I always want to capitalize it. That's funny. <laughs> well, you got the 48.9 in front of it too. So it's yeah. I mean <laughs> I thought about I thought about just instead of 0.9, like really writing it out, but I decided not to. <laughs> okay. Um wow, oh, yes. that's okay. <laughs> I'm really this is very interesting. Um, right. It really is. Yeah. 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 I, I, I enjoyed doing my research on this one. Not that I never don't enjoy doing my research, but I really enjoyed my research. On this one. Yeah. All right. So I think we're at the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. I had a question about this one. Yeah. Is the MBTA not considered a regional transit authority? Because you, you said it's the largest regional transit authority and maybe it is by area if the MBTA, is, I, I, I just don't know. But. I, I think it is larger in terms of the region it serves geographically, um, but I can confirm that. I mean, it's the second largest public transit system I don't think the MBTA is considered regional. I think it's considered uh, not municipal, but uh, yeah. metropolitan, maybe. Metropolitan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That. I figured it was because the MBTA wasn't considered regional, but yeah, I think that's true. I'll confirm this. And did this like so that seventy percent is wow? That's really something. And wondering where did this information just like did you find mm -hmm. this on their website or where did this information come from um i believe my source for that was the uh massachusetts government uh, the mass.gov but through through um public transportation information the, data, yeah sorry it's not con connecting today um yes through just through the information uh, on the state website about transportation um, and I'll, I will pull that up to confirm. But there are 15 regional transit authorities and then the MBTA. So it's not, you're right, yeah, that's correct, Mandy, that it is not considered a regional. Okay. Um, and do we normally cite in these kind of resolutions? I've seen where we have and where we haven't, but for something like this, we-, we It we, felt like it was getting needlessly complicated to cite. Um, yeah. If you'd like me to, I can. No. Okay, so whereas there is inadequate. Okay, whereas we recover. I, I have a little bit of a, um, I don't like in order to in order um where I, are you sorry what? crucial in order oh, thank you i usually just take that out and say crucial to improve um do you how do you all feel about that i would agree I, I don't like it as much but um and i don't think that in order to impacts the clarity consistency or actionability of this uh because i think that it's one thing that's needed. It's not the only thing that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, for me, in order to makes it a little bit more of like, it's part of a process versus mm -hmm. it's the only step in the process. But uh, again, if that's something the committee feels strongly about and, and needs to see, then that's fine. It's usually something that comes up like in a 
check it on any one of these. It like it tells you it, it isn't coming mm-hmm. up right now on man. <laughs> it, no, it, it came is. up. It's it's underlined. It, it came oh, up. Oh, okay. Um I've just taken it out, I've gotten used to taking it out, but I'm I don't have any strong feeling that it need, needs to be removed. Um for, it, for it, me it, when I read it, it's, yes. I mean when I read it as new state revenue is crucial to improve i mean it it just it feels clunkier to me but it doesn't if that's something that y'all feel strongly about then that's that's fine no let's leave it you like it let's leave it (laughs) and move on okay um all right this opportunity Okay, not seeing. So the only sorry, I'm I'm I have a clarity on my own thing. Um, sure. Technically, it's the Amherst Town Council's goals or um, Amherst Town Council's values, not goals. We don't have goals as a town. That's not to say we don't have lots of goals, but we don't have stated goals. <laughs> For Thank the you. Town Council's values, yeah. Nice. All right. Where is asking everyone to pay their fair share? So I put the S in lessons to match it with allows. So I guess the question is, is it allowing the state to lessen the large and growing gap or is it? Is the common good lessening? Yeah. Yeah. Which the which is the way you guys intended it? It's that it allows the state to lessen the growing gap. Okay. Yeah. And then we're getting the. I think these are the hyphens. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Uh, whereas a four cents per dollar. An Oxford comma. Love it. Thank you. A couple of them one there. Yeah. So I, I was struggling if it was like, well, hang on. So you don't want the Oxford comma if you're listing two things that are both multiple item, right? Like the Oxford comma only. Right. So, so this is education, infrastructure, transportation as a group. So that would be a Oxford comma. And I read it as fair, reasonable, long overdue, but maybe and Otherwise, it would be fair and reasonable and long overdue, depending on how you read it, right? Yep. Nope. Those are good then. Thank you. Okay. So I thought you were missing the word amendment, and then because it's an amendment, I capitalized it. Cool. And then the billion, and then an Oxford comma and the period, because we do periods uh, yes. at the whereas is. Yep. So there was a, oh yeah, nope, that sounds good. At least I got the date right here. <laughs> awesome. And one more Oxford comma down here. Mm-hmm. And then I just had one question, um, which yeah. is more uh, not clarity, consistency, or actionability, but mm-hmm. but maybe you guys know the answer. Um, is the amendment written such that the additional raised, if passed, cannot supplant already budgeted items for those items? Meaning, would the two billion? You know, a lot of times we see these, and you you pass this and it's for transportation. And so the state then takes the transportation mm-hmm. money out of the general mm-hmm. fund. Then, and so, you know, it's like, oh, well, we don't need it in the general fund anymore. I, I was just curious whether this amendment is written so that can't happen. So it would really be an additional 2 billion or would we sort of- um, My understanding is, is that it is additional and okay. new revenue. Um, I, I don't have the exact, um, language of it in front of me, but, but I could get that back, back to you. Not necessary. I was just curious. (laughs) I do have the exact text of the amendment in front of me. It does not specifically talk about supplanting, um, or not, but it, I mean, it does talk about, and I can read it, um, 
to provide the resources for quality public education and affordable public colleges and universities and for the repair and maintenance of roads, bridges, and public transportation. All revenues received in accordance with this paragraph shall be expended subject to appropriation only for these purposes. In addition to the taxes on income otherwise authorized under this article, there should be an additional tax of 4% on that portion of annual taxable income in excess of $1 million reported on any return related to these taxes. To ensure that this additional tax continues to apply only to the Commonwealth's highest income taxpayers, the 1 million income level shall be adjusted annually to reflect any increases in the cost of living by the same method used for federal income tax brackets. And it'll apply all tax years beginning on or after January 1, 2023. So it doesn't specifically talk about supplanting, um, but there's some, there's some interpretation in there, I think. So there might need to be some more work if this passes at the state house level. Okay. Yeah, to make and, sure it's not just like, whoop. And, and that's part of uh, one of the reasons of, of passing these town and city and, and school board uh, resolutions it is also not just to build a, a broad based coalition of support, but also once it does pass to ensure that um, this coalition that, that exists continues to, to press, pressure the uh, state legislator, legislature to um, follow up on, on the amendment and, and uh, distribute the, the funds to, to these um, to, to these resources and, and equitably throughout the state. Thank you. Shall I make a motion? Yes, that would be great. <laughs> I move to declare the Town of Amherst resolution in support of the fair share amendment uh, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended on June 8th, 2022. Second. And any further discussion? Okay. Um, Anika? Yes. Mandy? Oh, is that Mandy? Uh, yeah. I. <laughs> Sorry, it sounded like Andy, and then I'm like, Andy's not on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm an I. <laughs> Jennifer? I. Okay, great. Congratulations. Passes unanimously. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you both. Yep. And we'll get that over to Lynn and Athena and every role. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Perfect. <laughs> okay. We got you. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to wait to be booted. I'm sure Athena will do it. <laughs> we did lose Pat, so you could stick around. I can pretend to be Pat. <laughs> I don't have a cat, but I can pretend to be Pat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm not seeing anybody in the attendees other than Anna um, with, I should have asked if she was planning to make public comment. And if she stays there, I am going to read the public comment or I'm going to call for public comment um, before we decide what to do next. So um, Anna, if you would like to make public comment, please raise your hand. You um, are free to make public comment on matters within the jurisdiction of the GOL uh, for up to three minutes. And we will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised, but we will be taking notes. So please raise your hand if you'd like to make public comment. All right. So, we had um, a couple other things on the agenda here. What I'd like to do is um, use the remainder of our time since Pat is not here to review the bylaws and the opinion of GOL to be carried over to the next council to review that list. And I am gonna lean on you a little bit, Mandy, to uh, help us with respect to what we are actually tasked with doing. Um, but could we just take a two or a one minute pause? I need to use the bathroom. Um, or I can actually, Nika, if, if I'm just going to hand it over to you for a quick second here, I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So Mandy, did you want to clarify, go ahead and clarify while Michelle was Sure. So, so um, this is the what, what's in the packet, I think, is just the simple list. Um, we should let me see if there's. Yeah, this one's just the simple list. So the simple list, there, there's a better document that will help us decide which ones we want to take up sooner rather than later. But 
but when the charter was passed, there was a bylaw review committee that needed to be formed to basically review the bylaws and make them consistent with the new charter. So remove references to select board and town meeting, remove things that didn't apply anymore, add in references to town council or substitute a town council or town manager for the references to say select board or town meeting, um, and basically make it consistent with the new charter. And they did that we rescinded and replaced every single bylaw um, as a group but then they said we didn't know what to do with these and it was a big list you know that these might be more than just that administrative change here change there and so the council should continue looking at these they might be outdated maybe you want to do something much more substantive than that committee was tasked with and so GOL was tasked with that for the course of about two years. And as you guys have been able to see, GOL has very little time to do a lot of that um, as it was writing rules, as it was reviewing rules, as it was doing committees and all sorts of other things. And so we were able to get to a few of them to make recommendations of no, don't bother changing this. You know, it's been dealt with or, you know, this one needs rescinded. You know, we don't need it anymore. And you'll see some of that um, at the bottom of it. But basically, um there were some where we were like you know what the bylaw review committee said is logical and we need to look at it further you know and it needs some work and it needs some help um but we don't have the time or the expertise potentially that it needs to go um to someone else so what you're looking and um, let me just share it so i can go through um because this is the simple document um so what you're looking at is the summary of every single bylaw that GOL was told to look at and what we recommended be done with it. And so the ones we get to just say, ignore are these. GOL basically said, whatever bylaw review committee said about junk vehicles, RV uses, pawnbrokers, the trust, we're done with, we don't need to touch. It's either been fixed or we did something else or we just don't recommend anything. And the council accepted that. So, so this set here, this GOL committee doesn't really need to do anything with. Um, there was a set down here, number four, recommended for action, rescind it, rescission. The council did rescind that bylaw. So that one's done. Um, and then there was a group over here, number three, that GOL said, you know, we need a town committee, a board, uh, the manager, we need help from them because they're the ones that have to tell us whether something should be done or not. Um, you know, for example, um, littering and illegal dumping that the, the and, and this is just a, a, this is just the listing. There is a document that explains what we were tasked with doing or asked to look at in each of these documents. And for something like littering and illegal dumping, you know, it was, should we add in extra areas of town into that bylaw? Um, and expand the scope of that bylaw. And GOL said, we need CONCOMS and the Agricultural Commission's recommendations on that because that's where they were asking whether we should expand it to. And so that group, this entire group is what GOL recommended. And then the council did actually refer to the town manager to get those information, to get those um, departments or town and board committees to make those recommendations, to, to look at those bylaws, to make recommended changes, and then to get back to the town council. Um, so one thing that GOL should do is probably check in with the town manager on the status of this whole group. But until GOL hears from the particular group, um, that is referenced here, the town, you know, through the town manager, HR director, town attorney, GOL doesn't really have a role in this. Although you'll see in here, residential rental bylaw was in there and we recommended it go to the BLC and the board of license commissioner and the building inspector. CRC is now dealing with a whole rewrite, right? Um, this was a specific action for one particular thing, um, which the board of license commissioners was looking at, but, you know, and so we don't have much to do with this other than keep track and make sure that town manager is doing its job in getting these committees to look at them right. and get back to the town. Add, add to that, Mandy. So I did meet with Paul actually to review this list and um, it was, oh, it was when I first started. So I, cause I just wanted to jump on it and give time, but 
I feel like there's a timeline that we're supposed to report back. Maybe you said that when I was in the bathroom. That might be in a motion. Um, I'd have to look at the motion, right? That the council passed in December. Um, there might have been a timeline. But again, GOL is not tasked with making and recommending revisions to these particular bylaws. So the ones that we need to deal with are this group, the one in number one. Okay. where GOL went to the council and said, you know, we still need to look at these. And we think the town council can actually review these, that they don't need the expertise necessarily of a particular board or committee. Um, given what the board, the review bylaw review committee wanted us to look at that, that, you know, in terms of what solicit, I, and I can't even tell you what some of these were for, but say, for example, um, I think street numbering of houses, it was like, well, do you want to also talk about naming of houses or something? And, and that was, you know, GOL can have that conversation itself. Um, it, it, you know, and so um, fees and charges, you know, there were just things in there. And so we should pull up the bigger document that um, explains the request of the bylaw review committee in each of these uh, 10 bylaws. 12 bylaws. And then the next step should be picking one or two to focus on and then just sort of ticking off each one as we go instead of trying to do all 12 at once. Say, you know, after we see which ones are, we could as a committee pick off and say, you know, we want to focus on discharging of firearms and nuisance house, say, or nuisance house is soliciting first. Let's see what we can do with that. And when we're done with those and have made a recommendation to the council, we'll move on to street numbering and soap, snow and ice. You know, and instead of trying to do all 12 at once, GOL last time tried to do pretty much everything at once by farming it out to individual GOL committee members. Um, but then you're constantly trying to talk about 13 bylaws at once. And that became really hard. <laughs> so I would recommend picking one or two. Um, I think the full document that explains and summarizes each of these, including what's been done on them, is in the SharePoint, but I know it was in a council packet. It might take me a few minutes to find it, but- It's also, um, it's also in the January 19 GOL packet. From oh, this thanks. I have something also here that's in the packet, table of bylaws identified for future consideration with updates. Oh, that might be. Did I miss that in this packet? That's no, it's not, I did not add it to our packet, but it's in the SharePoint. Um, 82521 was the date. Um, I could pull that up for us. Am I allowed to no. pull something? Let me pull the January 19th one up. Okay. And also, Jennifer, I see your hand. Um, yeah, I was just wondering how how were those bylaws of all the bylaws selected? So, so when the bylaw review committee made its report about here's all the bylaws with all the changes for the charter, they also had a report that said, and here's ones we think the council needs to do more work on, but it's outside of the scope of the bylaw review committee. And so, so, okay, so, so when that, that was their recommendation, the council took that recommendation and then said, okay, bylaw review committee says, look at these other ones for and they had, and, and you'll see in here, they had specific reasons why they wanted us to look at stuff. Um, and so then the council said, GOL, take those reasons and do something with it. <laughs> and this, the, the summary I put up was that, that do something in a sense um, and, and all. So for example, um, you know, you know, the affordable housing trust GOL voted to recommend take no action personnel we we recommended a referral to the manager because there was inconsistency in the language of protected classes, but the bylaw review committee didn't believe it was within their purview to make a recommendation on how to be consistent that that should that was too substantive for what their charge was which was make the charter consistent make the bylaws consistent with the new charter. And so anything they saw about inconsistency or potentially not related to state law anymore, they said that's outside of their review and their charge, but still needs looked at. So we're going to tell the council to look at it. And th this is sort of the three-year evolution of that look. And so let's find one that they, they recommended GOL 
keep um that's not nuisance house so you know we apparently this is one that gol recommended to the council that it stay at gol for dealing with um and you'll see the bylaw review committee wanted the attorney to look at section G and wanted to determine the definitions of alcoholic beverage and owner of record. Um, and so there's been a town attorney discussion, um, but they also wanted us to revise other things. And so- And so we where needed, is this document? This was, as Athena said, was in the January 19th GOL packet. So I just pulled it up okay, from so the I January 19th. This up. Yeah. Okay. This is the one that helps would help us decide for the ones that are within GOL's purview still that weren't referred to the town manager for action that were kept within GOL, which ones we should look at first. Okay, thank you. And, and, I, I want to go look at, yeah, I'll look at the full document. Yeah. Thanks. It's 11 pages long, so it's huge because <laughs> okay. it, it does this for every single document that was. No, that's, that's great. Okay. You know, it, it does it for every bylaw that is in this summary great okay and this great. summary basically says here's what so you don't have to read 11 pages here's what we recommended in those 11 pages right right okay <laughs> great thank you and so do we want to add that to this week's packet mandy the the other document that you had had up i i think athena would probably say yes since i just put it up does that make sense athena to add it Sorry, would you repeat that, please? Um, should we be adding the document that Mandy just pulled up from December 2021 to the packet this week? Yes, if we're using it at the meeting, then we should add it to the packet. Perfect. So it's okay. the one that you said, Athena, was in the January 19th GOL packet. I'll do that now. Thank you. Okay, and Mandy, your recommendation for, if you could just help me to understand how to sort of flow this with our work schedule, um, what is your recommendation for how we should tackle this? So give, give me a second here and I will show you. Um, so my recommendation, these are the two documents put together, is to take the summary, whoops, um, and these 12, and have each committee member at the next meeting come back with sort of a rank order as to how they would like to deal with them. Like which ones should we look at first? And then the GOL can look at, based on, you know, nuisance houses on this one. Here's the summary of what we'd be tasked with, what we have been tasked with looking at with nuisance house. Um, based on the summaries in the GOL report, use item one from the summary of bylaw disposition and try and rank those 12 based on, you know, individual preference maybe, you know, but come to the next meeting with what each individual wants to work on first as a committee or thinks the committee should work on first. And then we can set an order and then we can start working and discussing on each one in a logical manner. Um, things to consider would be how necessary is the revision to be done quickly? versus can it wait two more years? You know, um, how extensive is it? How much time might it take? Um, you know, each person can can look at that and do that. And then maybe next meeting, we can actually discuss which ones we want to take up and in what order. Okay. And so taking up one or two or one, maybe per a couple per meeting, depending on what else our workload is. Um, and it, do you think in terms of criteria for ranking that there are any like goals or sort of values that should be taken into consideration when we're looking at the I mean I it's been so long I can't even tell you like what the reasons for looking at these are right now so I think I think if you're looking at you know as like as we go through firearm. those 12 yeah. you know look at are some of these more important are we having problems with some you know like that yeah. fixing the language would really help something or fixing the language um, furthers a goal, right? The, the other things we tend to consider, but until I, I like I said, I haven't reviewed the summaries, so I, I can't, I, I don't even remember why some of these are on here. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's dig in then on our own time to that um, between now and next week. And I like Mandy's suggestion to come back. Um, if you, 
I mean, you could, would it make sense? No, I guess we can't do that. I was going to say, could we send a rank in advance that I could look at? And then that way for next meeting, we could start, or can we make a decision right now, at least on one or two that could be added to next agenda? Or do you not, do you think it's not that? I much? mean, we could try, right? I, are these in the right order? Um, 26. I, so these might be, I don't know what order these are in, you know, we could try to briefly go through some of these and see. Um, Michelle, like, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to jump in quickly and, and let members know that the previous bylaw review committee has a really extensive report on some of these bylaws identified for future consideration in their 12, 16, 2019 packet that's still on the website. Awesome. Okay, that's yeah. great. So, Again, that's so the here's bylaw one review committee. Yeah. Okay, bylaw. I can share a link with you. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. That would so, be so let's take this one and maybe this one we can deal with next next meeting with a request for say the chief of police or the crest person to show up to the meeting, peeking and peering into the place of habitation. That's this first one on the summary of deal with the council. The bylaw review committee basically said, should we add drones? And so that's a discussion we could have, right? Um, you add what? Drones to the bylaw. And I'd have to pull up the bylaw to say how it reads right now, but that's peaking and peering. Wow. That, that's, that's your peeping bylaw, right? And so the question is, should we be adding technology to whether it's a violation to peek into someone's bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the bylaw review committee said, that's not under our jurisdiction. That's the council to have another discussion. We're not going to do it ourselves. Um, so we could put that on the agenda for next week to have that discussion as to whether we should be adding drones to that bylaw. Um, you and know, did, you, did you say uh, inviting somebody to participate, inviting the chief of police to participate? So, so, so you'll see here, the recommendation is, does G, should GOL deal with it themselves or should it be referred to another committee? And so since we're technically not supposed to, you know, these were the ones that were carried over, what our recommendation could be is to either deal with it ourselves or send it to, if we think it should be, I don't even know whether it should be TSO or CRC, or maybe we could just say, you know, GOL is just gonna make a recommendation. And the council, if they don't like GOL making a recommendation, can send it to another committee, right? Um, but I would say if we're thinking about dealing with this one on substantive level, we bring in the chief, right? We bring in maybe the Crest director to talk about, would it be helpful to add drones, um, you know, and other electronic cameras, you know? <laughs> right. Jennifer, I see your hand's been raised for a while. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's okay. I was just wondering, so um, like when I just glance at the list in terms of what might stand out as, you know, one of the, you know, top items we would look at, does Nuisance House um, seems relevant to our, you know, um, to CRC's revising the rental permitting? Yeah, so Nuisance House has had some work on it, right, um, about, a town attorney opinion, that's the summary that's right here. Um, and so we could talk about that one too, or that one, you know, town council needs to decide whether the review is appropriate to occur in GOL or needs to be referred to a separate committee. Um, it could potentially, given its relevance to rental that's in CRC, GOL could potentially deal with that one with a vote that says, we recommend CRC refer nuisance house by law to CR, you know, that the, the town council referred to CRC. So you know, those are perfectly in fine. Terms of, you know, what people yeah. in town are thinking of, that would be a high priority. Right. And so that's something that, you know, if, if we want to take up something like that next week, or even this week, if we're in this brief review saying, you know, that's, that's not what something GOL should do that really belongs in CRC, given what else is there, there could be a vote to recommend the council refer nuisance house bylaw to CRC. So I, I think we should do that. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. And as the chair, Mandy, I hope it sounds like you're okay with that, <laughs> given <laughs> that you suggested it. Is that okay? I mean, um, that's that's where I would send it if we weren't going to deal with it. Careful what you say. Yeah. No, but if GOL is not going to deal with it itself, given that CRC is dealing with rental registration and Nusa's house deals with that, and certainly some of these owner of record and all 
we're dealing with definitions like that right now, as Jennifer can say, um, can attest to we're we're talking about those definitions as it relates to rental permitting. So it's probably the appropriate place. Okay, let me make a proposal um, and see how this goes. So I agree we should we should vote to refer that um, both new both the peaking or peering and the discharging of firearms, um, which to me feels very relevant right now, um, is something that asks for the chief of police to be involved in in terms of a conversation. So I what about bringing. Uh, or inviting um, both the Crest Director and the Chief of Police to our next meeting to deal with both of those bylaws. Is that something, is there, do you see any problem with that, Mandy, um, with respect to what's being recommended there? So I'm pulling up the discharging ones and what they looked for, um, which and is have, definitions. Yeah, I have a different chart that I'm looking at that you are not, but yeah, it's similar, um, but it says uh, consult with the chief of police. It says the committee recommends future consideration of whether shotguns and air guns should continue yeah. to be excluded from the provisions of the bylaw. Um, and then, yeah, there are um, non-substantive amendments. Um, it also says to uh, consult with KP law regarding MPL. Um, but is that does that sound, sound like a fair plan to bring those two to our agenda next week and ask both Cress and the chief of police to join us? Is anyone opposed to that? I'm not opposed, but I'm not clear as to the what that what that bylaw is exactly for. So charging of firearms. The, the firearms, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I, I was gonna say, I think I already closed the, I, I already closed my general bylaws. Um, just, we can put it in the packet for next week. I, I think, cause we don't have the language on this one. Um, let me see if I can pull that up quickly. Um, to, to find that one. Okay, so here we go. Let me share this one. So the discharging of firearms, it starts at the very bottom. So it's this one. Um, no person shall fire or discharge a gun, fouling piece or other firearm, except as other provided in state law. Um, and then it doesn't apply to shotguns, air guns. And for these reasons, um, and then you can't do it within 150 feet of rail trails. And so it basically they asked us to look to update it and whether it's still updating. And then peeping and peering is the next one. Um, no person upon the property of another shall intentionally peep or peer into a place of habitation of another. And so that's where the question of, should we be adding drones and things like that, because you can, do that without standing upon the property of another. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those were sort of the questions for those two. Okay. Anika, does that answer your question with respect to the firearms? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. All right, so let's make a motion on referring um, the um, nuisance, what was it called? The nuisance house? Is oh. that? What is it called? Nuisance House Bylaw. N nuisance House Bylaw. <laughs> it's such an interesting name. Um, okay, would anybody, would somebody like to propose a motion on referring that? I can make that motion. Um, to recommend the town council refer the bylaw 3.26 nuisance house to the community resources committee for report and recommendation on changes recommended by the bylaw review committee. A second. Jennifer seconds, great. Any further discussion? I just have a question. So it has to go to the council and then the council refers, okay. But we could tech, we could probably get that 
on to consent anything. potentially yeah. Yeah. If, we, if we're anonymous if we're unanimous not anonymous unanimous. um anika how do you vote yes uh, mandy hi jennifer hi i'm an i as well all right so so for future agenda items um our next meeting is june 22nd um, and I just want to take a quick peek. Um, where am I here? Too much stuff pulled up. Okay. Um, so you're going to do peeking, peering, and firearms. Firearms. Yeah. And so instead of us, you know, I had recommended we just come back with the things. You could, as chair, just pick through these every so often as we finish them and say, you know, next time it's going to be town fees and charges. <laughs> okay. Let's do that just to take that step out. But if somebody feels strongly about one, just, just send me an email or once you've had a chance to look at them and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, and so I will send an invitation um, to invite uh, the chief and the Crest director for next meeting. Um, I'm also going to follow up with Paul about that list because I do believe there was a timeline attached to that. And I think it might be July from what I remember seeing. So yes, Jennifer. You're you, muted. I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask a question before the meeting closes. It's not pertaining to this. Oh, look at this. Okay, one, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, we'll do that. I So moved to request the town manager provide the town council with information regarding the following general bylaws by June 30th, 2022 as detailed in the governance organization and legislation committee memo, recommended disposition of referral bylaws identified for future consideration dated December 6, 2021. So that means, what does that mean for us, Mandy? That means I need to so follow- that means I, I would follow up with Paul. He's supposed to get to the council. His responses to that number two list, number three, whatever the list that was, three, three, okay. the third set. And that would mean, so we have a meeting on the 13th and then do we have a meeting on the 27th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I will send him an email as soon as we finish and just put that on his radar. Um, and then... Uh, for next week. Other than that, I, I really hope we can take a dive into the equity lens review. Um, I'm really hoping we can spend a, a good portion of time on that if nothing else comes our way. Is there anything else that any members know about that will need to be dealt with? Okay. I don't have anything that I can see. Um, so yes, Jennifer, and you had a question. Yeah. Yeah. So I've in the last few days been getting personal emails, not just the emails to the full council about the plant medicine. And I just needed my memory refreshed. Where does that stand now? It, it didn't get referred back to GOL. It's on, it was by motion um, postponed to the June 13th meeting. So it'll be on the June 13th oh, okay. council meeting. Thank you. All right. So if there aren't any other questions. Minutes. Oh, yes. Minutes. Thank you, Mandy. Yes. Let's adopt the May 25th, 2022 minutes. I'll second that motion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay. <laughs> Hopefully you got that, Athena. Um, okay. Uh, Anika. It is, it is Anika 10 59. We are right on time. I yes. know. <laughs> yes, yes and yes. Yes. Okay, Mandy. Hi. <laughs> uh, Jennifer. Yes, hi. Yes, for me too. Okay, excellent. I don't have any items that were not anticipated. And if there aren't any other announcements, I am, I feel like I want to wait until 11, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's be a minute early. Uh, journey at 1059. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.